Hello everyone, welcome to the online learning series. I am dealing with the chapter 5 magnetism and matter. So in our pre previous session we had discussed about the properties of the magnetic field lines. Today's session I am going to start with the dipole analogy. You have already studied about the electric dipole. What is an electric dipole? If you have a positive charge and a negative charge separated by a small distance 2L then this forms a electric dipole and this electric dipole do have a dipole moment the electric dipole moment which is denoted by the letter P. Now if I draw an axial line on this electric dipole and mark a point P somewhere here then what will be the electric field on this axial field and that electric field is given by A axial is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 2 p by r cube. This you have already derived and also if you draw a line draw a line which is perpendicular to the axis of the electric dipole and mark a point on it and if I have to find the electric field at that point p the electric field on the equatorial point is taken to be as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught p by r cube. So this is E axial and this is E equatorial and also you know that when you place an electric dipole in an external magnetic field then this electric dipole will experience a torque and that torque is given by tau is equal to p cross e. These things you have studied in the first unit. Now coming to the magnetic dipole. In the previous session I had already told you that magnets never come in monopole. That is magnetic monopole never exist. Only the magnetic dipole exists. So if I say I have a bar magnet then bar magnet has two poles. One is north another one is south. Now if I draw an axis on this bar magnet and if I take this point P where I have to find the magnetic field, what I do here is I am just going to replace E by B, electric field by magnetic field and the electric dipole moment by the magnetic dipole moment and the constant 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught by mu naught by 4 pi. Then what will be the magnetic field on the axial line that will be equal to just replace these things in this formula e I, b actual will be equal to mu naught by 4 pi 2m by r cube and what about e b equatorial it is equal to mu naught by 4 pi m by r cube and when you place this bar magnet in an external magnetic field the bar magnet experience torque which is given by the formula m cross g. So comparing the formulas of electric dipole and magnetic dipole I can say that the electric dipole and magnetic dipole are very much similar to each other. Now let us discuss the topic bar magnet as an equivalent solenoid. So you know what is solenoid from your previous chapter. Solenoid is a long insulated wire, a conducting wire which is wound in the form of a helix. So whenever current I passes through this solenoid then a magnetic field lines are going to pass through this solenoid. You have already studied what is the magnetic field inside the solenoid. So the magnetic field inside the solenoid is given by B is equal to mu naught N I where mu naught is the absolute permeability, N is the number of turns per unit length and I is the current in the solenoid. Now if I come to the outside of the solenoid the magnetic field will be 0. It is said that the magnetic field is stronger inside the solenoid and the, as, as we come outside the solenoid the magnetic field becomes equal to 0. And 
here we are discussing that a bar magnet is equivalent to a solenoid. We are going to compare a solenoid with a bar magnet. Bar magnet does have two poles, north pole and south pole. And even the solenoid is having two poles. One end will be considered as north pole and the other end will be considered as south pole depending on the direction of the current. So, this is just similar to a bar magnet. And if you take a bar magnet and break it into two pieces, then you are going to get two bar magnets of weaker magnetic property. Similarly, if you take a solenoid and cut it into two parts, then you are going to get two solenoids of weaker magnetic properties. So, let me see how to show that a bar magnet is equivalent to a solenoid. Now, let us consider a solenoid of length 2L. So, this is a solenoid which is having total length 2L. This is the midline. I have marked a midpoint O and this will be called as a midline and this is the axis okay, which is perpendicular to the midline. Now, if this is the midline, then the length of the solenoid will be L and L. So, totally it is 2L. And I am going to say that the area, sorry, the radius of this solenoid, I am will just take it as A. So, A is the radius of this solenoid. Now, to find the magnetic field on the axial line, so this is the axis I have drawn. And let me mark a point P where I have to find the magnetic field. So, on the axis of the solenoid, a point P has been marked. And this, at this point P, I am going to find the magnetic field due to the solenoid. So, for that, I cannot first consider the complete solenoid. So, I am going to first take a small element. So, let me mark a small element here. This is a small element. And the thickness of the small element is dx. Say the thickness is dx. I have considered a small element of thickness dx. First, I am going to find the magnetic field at this point P due to the small element dx. And I am going to integrate it to the complete solenoid. So, let us see what is the distance of this small element dx from the center. Let me assume the distance to be x this distance I am going to consider as x. So, the small element which I have considered is at a distance x from the center or the midline O. And let me also say this point P is at a distance r from the midline. It is at a distance r from the midline. And let us also consider the number of turns in this solenoid is capital N. So, the total number of turns in the solenoid is capital L, N. And small n is the number of turns per unit length. That is small n will be written as N by 2L. Small n is N by 2L. That is the number of turns per unit length. Because the length of the solenoid is taken to be 2L, we will write small n which is equal to N by 2L. Okay. Keeping all this information in mind, I am going to derive the magnetic field at point P due to the small element dx. In the previous chapter, we have studied that if I have a circular current carrying loop, this is a circular current carrying loop of radius r and this is the center and I have drawn an axis which is perpendicular to this circular loop. So, the circular loop is facing me and I have drawn an axis in this direction. I will mark this point P and this distance is taken as x. And using Biosovert's law, we had derived what will be the magnetic field at this point. And the result was B is equal to mu naught N I R square by 2 into X square plus R square whole power 3 by 2. Here you know mu naught is a absolute permeability, n is the total number of turns in this coil 
and I is the current flowing through the circular loop, R is its radius and X is the distance from the center to this point P. So, we are going to consider this formula to write the magnetic field at point P due to this small element dx. They both are very much similar. Therefore, I am going to use this formula here. Now, the magnetic field at a point P due to the small element of thickness dx is given by dB is equal to here you have to write the magnetic field as dB because we are finding the magnetic field due to small element therefore the magnetic field is dB then we are going to integrate this dB to get the final net magnetic field. So dB is equal to so just compare with that formula mu naught n n is the total number of turns in this small element is what we have to write here. So, if the thickness of this small element is dx and small n is the number of turns per unit length, then the total number of turns in this small element can be written as n into dx. n is the number of turns per unit length. dx is the thickness of that uh, small element. Therefore, n dx gives us the number of turns in the small element of thickness dx. So, n dx. Next, I is the current which is flowing in the solenoid. R is what the radius was. In that case, it was radius. But here, the radius is taken as a square divided by 2 into x square. x is nothing but the distance from the center to the point. So, the distance from the element to the point is what I have to take here. So, the distance from the element to the point is. So, if this distance is r and this is x, what is the distance from the element to the point? It is r minus x. Therefore, this will be r minus x whole square plus r square. That is nothing but the radius a square whole power 3 by 2. So, this is what the magnetic field at the point P due to the small element which is of thickness dx. Next, I am going to integrate this. Since I want to find the net magnetic field at the point P due to the complete solenoid, I am going to integrate this dB. So, what happens if I integrate dB? This mu naught is a constant n, i, a square are all brought outside the integral symbol divided by 2 then integral what are the things which are left dx by r minus x whole square plus a square whole power 3 by 2. Now I need to integrate this from what are the limits I have to consider here. So the total length of the solenoid is 2L. And I have taken the midline here that is at the center. So, uh, I am going to take the limits as minus L to plus L. Say if this line was taken at this side at the corner of this solenoid. Then I had to take the limits as 0 to 2L. Since the length of the solenoid is 2L, I would have taken it as 0 to 2L. But I have considered this line at the midpoint. Therefore, the limits will be taken as plus L minus L. The length of the solenoid towards the right is taken as positive and towards the left is taken as negative. Therefore, the limits can be written as minus L to plus L. Next, let us now integrate this. Before integrating, I am considering a solenoid and the point P at a very far away distance. That is, this point P is at a very far distance. Now, if the point P is at a far away distance, then I can consider this R to be very much greater than this X and also R to be very much greater than this A. So, for a far away distance, for the point which is at a very large distance, R to be very much greater than X and R to be very much greater than A. If R is very much greater than X and very much greater than A, then we can write this equation R minus X whole square plus A square whole power 3 by 2 
is approximately equal to r cube that is i am neglecting this x and a square they are very small compared to this r therefore if i just neglect them i am going to get r square whole power 3 by 2 2 2 gets cancelled r cube is what going is going to remain now magnetic field is now equal to take down the constants mu naught n i a square by 2 r cube integral minus l to plus l dx now let us integrate this dx so what do i get if i integrate dx i get x therefore now magnetic field b is equal to mu naught n i a square by 2 r cube x limits minus l to plus l so if you apply the limits minus l to plus l you are going to get the upper limit minus the lower limit which is equal to mu naught n i a square by 2 r cube into what is the upper limit plus l minus lower limit is minus l minus of minus plus l so you are going to get 2 l this is equal to mu naught n i a square by 2 r cube into 2 l but i am going to write the final answer using the constant mu naught by 4 pi so if i have to represent it using this mu naught by 4 pi then here i have 2 i need to multiply 2 pi to get 4 pi here so i am going to divide 2 pi so that the formula will not change next mu naught by 4 pi into r cube this r cube will remain as it is now let us see what happens to the numerator in the numerator i will take n 2 l together i is the current then i am left with a 2 2 pi therefore i will multiply this 2 into pi a square 2 pi a square a is what the radius of this solenoid pi a square is this the that gives the area of cross section so magnetic field b is equal to mu naught by 4 pi 2 into we have n into 2 l i into pi a square divided by r cube now here n into 2 l n is the number of turns per unit length into 2 l that means i am going to get the total number of turns in the solenoid so this gives i am going to write mu naught by 4 pi 2 into capital N, N into 2L is nothing but the total number of turns in the solenoid, I into pi A square, A is the radius and pi A square gives the area of cross section of that solenoid. Therefore, I will write pi A square as the area A divided by R cube. If you just look at this, N I A, number of turns in the solenoid, current in the solenoid and area of cross section this is nothing but the magnetic dipole moment the magnetic dipole moment m is given by n i a therefore i will replace this as mu naught by 4 pi 2 m by r cube so while explaining the dipole analogy i had showed you that the axial field of a magnetic magnetic dipole is equal to mu naught by 4 pi 2 m by r cube and even in the case of solenoid the magnetic field on the axial line is mu naught by 4 pi 2 m by r cube the bar magnet and the solenoid are going to produce same magnetic field therefore we can conclude the bar magnet is equivalent to a solenoid in this session we have discussed that a bar magnet is equivalent to a solenoid and here i am going to end the session thank you